Hey guys, this is Melvin. Welcome back to this new video where today I'm gonna show you how I made these 3D shoe renders. We're gonna do this all within Blender and this is gonna be an animation tutorial. So we're not gonna model shoes. I highly advise that you check out the description. I am going to link a couple of free shoe models that I found and that you can download yourself so that you can follow along with this tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm going to use this shoe model right here. So first things, when you import it, you might find that there is a bunch of different elements and things aren't really linked together. What we're gonna do for that is create a new empty, a cube, and then make it smaller, right click and adjust empty display size. Make sure it is also aligned on the top view. With my empty selected, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command I to reverse my selection. And then this is gonna select all the rest of your model. Make sure you don't have the default cube, light and camera still in your scene. Then select your empty and you're gonna press Ctrl or Command P to link it. And this will allow us to have a shoe control very easily that can be used for animating or anything like that. Then I'm gonna press M2 and rename this shoe control. You can also double click right here. And then to create this kind of support, just like I made in the video, you're gonna wanna start with a cube or a plane. I'm gonna do a cube. Go into edit mode and scale it all the way down. Scale it as well on the Z. Actually, I want it way wider. So I'm going to do S and shift Z and then make it, yeah just a bit bigger, kind of like this. We can also change it later if necessary. For now, I'm gonna hide my shoe since I'm not going to need it. So I'm gonna press shift and hide my control. If you scaled everything inside of edit mode, your scale should be fine. If not, you have to press control A and apply all your transforms. Then what we wanna do is go to our front view. You can also use the little gizmo right here to go to your front view. Tab into edit mode and we're gonna press two on your keyboard for the edge select. Everything is selected right now, so I'm just going to click somewhere random and go press Alt Z to activate my X-ray view all over just like this. You should be in your box select mode to achieve this effect. Then I'm gonna press numpad seven and go to my top view. And then I just wanna bevel my edges just like that. I think something like that should be pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna scroll on my wheel to add some geometry just like that. Okay. And then as we can see, it created some weird geometry right here. We're just going to fix this by right clicking and auto shade it on smooth. I also added it to my quick favorite so that you can do this fast. You can just add to quick favorite on right clicking on it. And then what I wanna do is add a bevel modifier to this cube. So, we're gonna do a subtle bevel. I'm gonna hover over this, drag this and press shift as I drag it to be very precise. Otherwise it would be super hard. You can also dial in some numbers right here to make it more precise. But in my case, I kinda want something just like this, I think, and then add some geometry over it. Something like six should be fine. And we can just close this for now and keep it. Then what we wanna do to create these kind of stairs just like this is use an array modifier. You can just type array right here. And instead of a relative offset, we're gonna use an object offset. For that, we're gonna need to create an object. So let's press shift A and add a plane axis empty. Now I'm gonna make my display size a little smaller. I don't need something that big. 
maybe something like that should be fine. Then raise it above just a little bit like that. Then select your cube again, and we're gonna add some geometry. Oh, why isn't it working? It's because we need to first drag and drop our empty right here. And as we can see, our empty is now controlling our array. So I want to make it actually a bit smaller and then you're going to press S and also scale it down. And it's going to create this kind of platform effect with this array control. I can just create this effect and maybe do something like that smaller and add a couple more. Something like that should be cool. So I'm going to rename this layer array control. And this one, we're going to call it support. And now that this is all done, we're already moving forward to the animation part. So how do we do it? I'm going to go somewhere around frame 50 and insert a location and rotation keyframe by just pressing I and selecting these. Now I'm going to go to zero. And I think I want to do something. Yeah, something like this at first, let's say location, rotation. We can put this a bit higher for now. And then I think I actually want it to be a bit higher towards the end. And also I'm going to change. You can bring this by pressing N. I'm going to impact the rotation. So I'm going to insert keyframes here and here, just hover over it and press I. And I'm thinking, should I add some more array to this? Mm, no, I think it's fine. So now here's how I made the shoe stick to this part, top part, as it's going upwards like this. So to do that, I just simply selected my cube and added a constraint of shrink wrap, put my support as the constraint. You can just adjust it like that, just like that should be cool. And now, as we can see, the Z location will follow this support for our shoe. Of course, we don't have the rotation yet. We're about to add this. But first, I kind of want to adjust this animation, make it a bit faster, something like this, and then just drag in a new window to pull up our graph editor right here. You can go to view frame selected to make your graph editor easier and also press normalize. It'll make it way easier. Hold down shift and select everything just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to speed it up just like this. And let's see what happens. It's way too much, of course. So I'm just going to move it off to the sides. And it seems like there's a couple keyframe we don't use. I'm just going to delete these because these are just, uh, they take a lot of place. Yeah, we're just using these two. So make it a bit longer, maybe a bit less intense. Like that. Okay, actually I want it stronger. Let's see. I think that's pretty cool. So now for the rotation, we're simply going to add a keyframe on the Z rotation of our shoe control. So it's going to start right here. Insert a keyframe. Single keyframe on the Z rotation. And now I'm going to go to my top view and just insert another keyframe. Hold on shift to be precise right here in the same alignment, insert a single keyframe. You're going to have to match your animation that you just made kind of like that it was. And now let's see it. Yeah, it's not perfect at all. Let's see where this keyframe ended. Oh, that's probably why it wasn't perfect. 
just select this keyframe, press G and move it over here. Now it should be way better. Okay, that's looking good. I advise you to take your time on this task. It's a very time consuming process, but the more time you spend in the graph editor, the better your animation is gonna be, of course. So I think I can already set up a quick scene. I'm not gonna do too much, go too much into the details, but basically I'm gonna use cycles, only put one or 200 here. Doesn't really matter for now. And as we can see, we have our shoe on top of our rack, just like this. What I can do is drag in a new window and on the right, this is gonna be our rendered view. I can just add a new camera, Alt R, put it up to the front, G, Y, R, X, 90. I think then you press numpad zero to have your camera right here. You can press also this button if you don't have a numpad to go in your camera view. So now, am I using my world lighting? No, not yet. So what I want to do is add an area light that is right on top. And we're also going to add a floor. So a plane. I'm going to rename it uh, backdrop, in fact. And then just tab into edit mode. Go to your edge select and press E, Z to make some kind of wall, just like this. We're gonna add a bevel, control B on this part. Scroll up with your wheel to add some geometry to it. And now I'm gonna back up my camera a little bit and make it something like 110 millimeters. I just think it looks better that way. And also I had rendered the original format in vertical. So we can do that right here, 1080 by 1920. And now just kind of adjust your camera settings to match your scene. Maybe add a little bit of rotation just like that. I think that's pretty cool. We're going to scale all of this up, Shift Z and G Z, just like that. Bring up your area light as well. And now what we can do is just press Control B and select this area to only render this part. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. And then I think I want it a bit higher, just like this maybe a little curved in. That's pretty cool. So now for my backdrop color, I had already created a background material that I liked. I think this color is really cool. Make sure to shade that smooth if it's not done. But you can really just go anywhere create a new BSDF material and add any color that you like. I think something like that could be cool or really something just like this. We're actually going to do some kind of gradient in the background using our light. So to do that, I can kind of move it off to the side and then press R twice and just create a little gradient like that. I think that's pretty cool. And then you can lower this number, make it less intense maybe, and just kind of play around with it. Don't make something too harsh. So now what I'm going to do to light this shoe is create an area light and we're going to change it a little bit. First of all, I want to drag, just go into your shader editor. Activate use nodes and then center it with the view selected. And now what you want to do is press control T. You need the node wrangler down add on for this as always control T node wrangler and just activate it if you don't have it. And then instead of a image texture, 
We're going to use, I forgot, you can't change switch type in the new version of Blender. So I'm just going to create a new noise texture. And that's a really simple lighting trick to make your scene look good in this case. And we're also going to add a color ramp. Just like this and set your spread to one. And now let me just hide the other light that we have. If I bring this in a little bit, it should create some really cool highlights just like this. And then you should be able to move around your light. And oh, I really like that. And actually that looks really cool. So you could just create an animation where you move around your light like that. I really like the look of it. And, but for now, I'm just going to press shift R and rotate around the 3D cursor. That way I can move around my light by pressing R twice. And it's just going to rotate around our shoe just like that. And I think I want to do something like that. Maybe go back to your shader editor and add some more light and then activate our background backdrop light again. And this is what it'll look like. Maybe put it something like that. Also, if you want to control how harsh your shadows are, you can control that with the spread right here. Here, the shadows will be way more subtle. It'll still have an effect, but it'll be more subtle. So I think I'm going to keep it at one for me. And I think something like that is pretty cool. Don't forget to save your scene. And then if you want to make your shoe take off, just like on the original video, I'm just going to switch to material preview because it's just easier to load this way. What you got to do is first add some frames to the end. And then we're simply going to around here, animate the distance. So we're just going to insert a keyframe right here, then go further and make it a little higher, just like this. Insert another keyframe and just preview how it looks. It might not be perfect quite yet. You got to mess around quite a bit with your graph editor to get your animations right. But for example, here, this is my distance shrink wrap that I just created. I think that first of all, I don't want to make it go that high. So I can press G Y and lower it just like this. And yeah, this is the animation we got so far. I think it's pretty cool. You can also add some rotation, some more rotation to your shoe. This is the original scene I created. I made the shoe start from much earlier. As we can see at the beginning, it was right on a completely different angle and you would rotate a bit more. And yeah, I think that's, this one turned out really cool as well. But this is all the exact same principles that I just showed you. If we take a look at what the scene looks like, like this, it's same thing, a light that hits the background. These are the light settings and that adds a lot to it, I think. And then same thing, a light that hits the shoe with a noise texture. And then I also added one light, as you can see, there's a flash going over it. And I thought that it was cool to have a little flash of light as the shoe flies up in the air. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys liked it. Thank you all so much for almost a hundred subscribers under a month. That really makes me want to keep doing YouTube videos. So thanks a lot, guys. That was Melivan. See you guys.